Well, I'd say 30 years to pretty much the present. The arcades have been relegated to the back rooms and the side streets and uh, generally been an unsavory type of place. What we want to do is bring the amusement game to age. If we can give it a new zip and a pizzazz, it's going to be uh, financially successful as well as, I think, a very serious part in the leisure time activity of the American people. The marriage of traditional pinball machines and computer technology has resulted in the birth of a new breed of amusement games. And Nolan Bushnell is the man handing out the cigars. Bushnell has developed two such games, Computer Space and Pong, and believes that they and others like them will move the pinball industry out of America's bus stations and bowling alleys and into the space age. In 1971, Bushnell invented computer space, but sold production rights to Nutting Associates of Mountain View, California, for royalties based on the number of games sold. It proved a good deal for both parties. Sales already exceed 1,500 machines. Computer space, like Pong, sells for around $1,000, and is played on the screen of a standard television set, which has been programmed to display the desired game. In computer space, the player controls a rocket ship, which is trying to shoot down enemy flying saucers while avoiding their missiles. If the player scores more hits than the enemy saucers, he gets one free play. By the time Bushnell invented Pong in 1972, he was able to form his own company, Syzygy Corporation in Santa Clara, California, to produce the game. He has already sold over a thousand machines and expects to sell 10,000 in the United States by the end of the year. Pong, as the name might indicate, is a game of video ping pong. The two players turn dials which control their electronic paddles and volley with an equally electronic ball. first player to score 15 points wins. While Bushnell did design and program both his games, the technology he uses dates back to the late 1950s. Thanks to research by the Defense Department in the wake of Sputnik, Bushnell is now able to act out his dream of a nation inhabited by thousands of Pong and computer space games. The government spent millions of dollars to, on this technology. And as a result, now it's cheap enough that we can put it into a game and sell it for 25 cents for uh, a few minutes and, uh, and make a dollar out of it. It's, a, um, it's something that the research and development really was, was done many years ago, and now it's cheap enough that uh, with PC boards and integrated circuits, we can use that technology to our advantage. The basic electronic unit of Bushnell's games is the integrated circuit. Each of these small chips is capable of storing large amounts of information. The program for a game is determined by specific combinations of these units to form a PC, or printed circuit board. The printed circuit board then tells the TV screen what to do. A single printed circuit board is all that is required to operate Pong, whereas 15 years ago it would have taken enough tubes and wiring to fill an average house. Bushnell first saw the commercial potential of video games in a game called Space War, which has been played at computer centers around the country for several years. We used to play uh, Space War a lot at the AI project at Stanford, which uh, is a big computer complex. And um, one day it just hit, you know, this is a lot of fun. You ought to be able to package it and sell it for a price. And, you know, one thing leads to another, and pretty soon, from doodling on a scratch pad, you're actually working out some basic block diagrams, and from there you think, boy, you know, it's going to work. The AI project, where Bushnell first played Space War, is the artificial intelligence project nestled in the hills behind Stanford University in Palo Alto, California. AI is typical of computer centers where people met after hours to play the first computerized video games. Ralph Gorin is AI's head system programmer and resident space war expert. Well, computers started playing games because uh, of a class of individuals sometimes called hackers uh, who uh, received access to computers, uh, sort of uh, uh, midnight and odd, other odd times. Um, hackers are sort of compulsive computer programmers. Uh, 
if they're given access to a computer, they'll write programs. And as display devices became available with computers, uh, these people started using them in new and different ways. And Space War was born of the display technology, the emerging display technology, and uh, these compulsive programmers. Gorin might resent people using the Space War game he helped develop for their own personal profit, but he denies any ill feeling. I don't feel ripped off by people who use uh, the Space War program. Uh, I'm not the sole author of Space War. Uh, my term of proprietorship of Space War is, r is a rather short one, uh, considering the game's lifespan. Uh, I stood on the shoulders of many people, and I don't mind uh, the weight of others on mine. Uh, I think it's a fine thing that Space War and other computer games should be brought to wider public uh, availability. Until recently, however, a game such as Space War could only be the private pastime of computer fanatics, largely because the technology was too expensive for commercial use. But that has changed. Technology is such that uh, things that cost lots of money years ago uh, cost uh, much less these days. You can get mini computers these days for $2,000 to $10,000. You can spend as much as you want, of course but you can get a machine that could play Space War, for example, for just a couple of thousand dollars. So it becomes reasonable to employ these machines in new ways. I mean, if you have a uh, million dollars invested in a piece of equipment, you're not apt to put it in a penny arcade. Uh, when the price goes down to $2,000, perhaps you would. Although the price has not dropped to that level yet, at least one individual is planning for the day when it will. Bill Pitts, who worked at AI in the late 1960s, has also entered the video amusement industry with his Galaxy game. An outgrowth of Space War is played at AI. Galaxy is a two-player game simulating a torpedo duel between rocket ships in outer space. Galaxy is by far the most sophisticated video game on the market. It allows a choice of four different games. In one, the player actually pre-selects torpedo velocity, rocket speed, gravity force, and other variables. Integrated circuits and printed circuit boards do not permit this level of sophistication, so Galaxy designer Pitts has had to utilize a more complex computer system. The um, hardware that Bushnell uses in the Pong game is a printed circuit board which he designed specifically to do the job of playing Pong. Whereas we're using a general purpose mini computer and the game that we play, we are playing now, Galaxy game, is determined only by the program. And if we wanted to change this to be some other game, we could change the programming in a matter of 10 minutes in the field for each machine and we would have a different game. The ultimate in video games would be one with the flexibility of Pitt's game and the low cost of Bushnell's, but the two elements have not yet come together. The mini computer used in the first Galaxy game cost $12,000 alone, so Pitt's has been able to build only three games. It will be another three to five years before the price of his hardware will be low enough to permit large-scale production of Galaxy or games like it. So, for the immediate future, the advantage seems to lie with the less expensive game, Pong in Computer Space and Nolan Bushnell. At Syzygy's factory in Santa Clara, Bushnell employs 130 workers who have been turning out 300 Pong games a week. Like the product itself, the workers are young, with an average age of 23. Most of the factory is devoted to the assembling and testing of the game, but one area serves as a research department where 40 new games are being planned. Six are already firmly committed to production. Not only are new products being mapped out, but new markets as well. More aesthetically pleasing and relatively less noisy than standard pinball machines, Pong and computer space have already moved beyond the walls of the traditional arcade. 
Uh, we have machines now in Sears, we have them in pizza parlors, we have them in shopping malls, uh, clothing stores, uh, department stores, almost anywhere that people have time on their hands. Uh, a shopping mall is a, is a great place to go and kill time. Many times you don't want to even shop. Uh, and so people are walking up and down uh, looking for something to do. They get tired of looking at the four walls of their apartment and they want to get out and take a look at things. And if our machines are there, uh, it's fun for them and that's what they want to do. And the technology that allowed Bushnell to create these video games and make them widely available has now allowed the amusement industry to take another step. Ironically, it is a step back inside the four walls of apartments and homes. Video games, after all, are no more than programmed television sets. And now, for $100, any set can be programmed with the Odyssey game produced by Magnavox. With much simpler technology than Pong or computer space, Odyssey allows you to play a version of Pong. So for the first time, people can personally program on a limited scale what appears on their television screen. But as more complex technology becomes cheaper, people will be able to program their television sets in more sophisticated ways. The home terminal uh, will be uh, commonplace in most people's, you know, in most people's homes, uh, like the telephone. And you'll have access to computerized databases uh, to do your shopping, to uh, find out what's going on, current events, news digests, uh, replaces, trips to the library, um, and really countless uses. Games have thus become the unlikely escort, bringing computer technology into the home and signaling an age of mass employment of computers in everyday life.